I'm waiting to see the on-air sign. <laughs> All right, we're on the air. So, um, welcome to the July 18, 2017 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Um, we have a, night, a light agenda tonight. We have approval of the minutes for the prior meeting. And five, seven, the item on the agenda is 517 Ocean House Road, LLC versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, remand. And then, uh, and public comment not on the agenda would be the last item. So, meeting minutes, any comments, corrections? Go ahead, John. Just one, um, on page two, uh, the fourth paragraph from the bottom, it states, Mr. Sarbeck asked to see the photo taken from Tiger Lily Lane and noted that you can't see the tower from there because of the tree cover. I uh, just um, asking for an amendment to that, that would note that it was Mr. Kennedy that noted that you <coughs> can't see the tower from there because of the tree cover. Um, that was something that I had said and when I, from the, how it's written now, um, it seems to indicate that I asked about the photo and then noted that you can't see the tower there because of the tree cover, but that's not how I remember it happening, so. Okay, so Mr. Kennedy's noted, noted that you can't okay. see the tower from there because of the tree cover. Okay. I, I have one on page four, the seventh, seventh line down or seventh paragraph down uh, where it's talking about looking at the bigger picture when zoning changes are made. Last sentence in that paragraph said, she also said that text changes would need site plan review. I believe it's business, businesses would need site plan review, not the text changes. Yes. <coughs> Businesses. Okay. Anything else, Peter? Yeah, Caroline, it, it correctly notes that I stepped in for you as chair for the uh, district uh, portion of the meeting. Could it reflect that on the, when the next item of business came that you resumed your position oh, as chair? Okay. That would be when we start talking about the BB okay. Fowler Road. So when we get to 27 Fowler Road, indicate that um, I came back in as chair. Okay. Anything else? Jim? Yeah. Um, on page four, right after Mr. Curry seconded the motion and it was approved six to nothing, I had to leave. So I was not present for the agricultural easement amendment portion, if that matters in this. I have not usually um, put that so-and-so Okay, left. that's fine. I didn't know how accurate you wanted to be. Okay. I can put it in if you wish. That's fine. Anything else? Do I have a motion? <coughs> motion on the minutes. As amended. As amended? As amended. Thank you. Do I have a second? Peter? All right, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. All right. Next item is 517 Ocean House Road, LLC versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, Remand. <coughs> Would you like to give us a, an overview, Ms. O'Mara? <coughs> Um, so I've attached for the board's perusal the copy of the remand. Uh, John, while our town attorney is here to advise you, there are three items that the court has asked you to provide additional findings on, and um, I'm going to defer to John on anything else. That's fine. Do okay. you want him to? It's on. It's on. Mr. Wall, would you like to uh, give us a? An overview. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, actually, the issues uh, that the court remanded for further findings are pretty well encapsulated within the, the memorandum that you have that's dated July 18. The only thing I would add to the, the memo is a couple of additional points that the, the court mentioned in its remand order. One was that the, the court expressly authorized the board to make additional, uh, take additional evidence if it saw fit in order to be able to resolve the issues. It, it's sent back on remand. 
And it also uh, expressly authorized the addition of uh, some uh, supplemental conditions in order to be able to resolve the factual issues. So um, other than that, the specific issues the court mentioned are set forth in the memo. So I'm not sure there's much else I need to tell you in terms of what the board needs to do. Um, obviously, the board just has to, I, I think, take a look at the existing record, see if there's a, a sufficient information in it right now for the uh, most spe more specific findings to be made. Um, and then, if not, for the board to consider whether or not it's going to open the evidence in order to take some additional information from the applicant and anyone else who's interested in presenting the evidence uh, with regard to that. Thank you. So at, at this point in time, before the board gets into their discussion, I'm going to open it up for public comment. If anyone would like to comment, please come to the microphone. Uh, please state your name and, and I'm going to say address or relationship to, to this and uh, three minutes, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Peggy McGee with the law firm of Perkins Thompson, and I'm here on behalf of the appellant, 517 Ocean House. And I did submit a letter. Uh, I have copies if, um, if, if anyone would like to have a copy. Uh, so if, if everybody received it by email, we're all set. Just in case, I'll pass it to you. Careful. That didn't count. That's my three minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. I have, uh, we have no quarrel with um, what uh, Attorney Wall said to you. Uh, uh, what we have are, uh, and I will note that it was almost exactly this time of year, mid-July last year, we had the first remand. So we are here with the second remand. Uh, I believe personally that the judge wants you to do the denying of the application. It is substandard. It doesn't meet your standards. and. Uh, and these standards are now being remanded. And two of the standards, the court specifically says, in the record, the court finds no evidence, not just no substantial evidence, but no evidence. Uh, and so uh, unless the board knows something that's not in the record, uh, that the court doesn't know, uh, the court finds that there is no evidence um, that the lighting is adequate uh, in that back parking lot for employees and has advised the board that employees matter as much as the public in terms of safety uh, and going into the dark parking lot. Um, and then the second one where it says there's no evidence that there's um, plantings between the sidewalk um, and the uh, parking lot, that there are supposed to be plantings under the ordinance. Uh, then the third one is, um, you, as you re will recall, the application says there's floodlights. And uh, you had said, well, when our, our ordinance says shielded, the floodlights used to be shielded, you were saying uh, that buildings and trees could be the shield. Uh, the court is asking you whether that is sufficient to shield the floodlights from uh, the night sky. And so here's what we're uh, suggesting, and that is uh, that uh, there is no evidence in the record. I don't think you, that you're going to find evidence of a shielded uh, light or the plantings or that there's lighting in the back parking lot. There will need to be additional evidence. Uh, and that means the applicant has to come forward with a revised application, a new landscaping plan showing shields on the floodlights uh, and uh, uh, showing uh, that there's uh, lighting uh, that's going to be there for the employees or else they're not going to park there at night. This can't be a condition of approval. You can't say this is approved and we're just going to have our town planner determine administratively that these additional uh, requirements are met because these are review criteria. It's not an administrative thing. And your ordinance requires the board uh, to make those decisions and specifically says the town planner is not authorized to decide on the uh, conditions of approval. Uh, and so the conditions of approval um, won't won't do the job. Uh, the, the evidence in the record is not there for you. And so uh, we maintain that it's up to the applicant to come forward with additional evidence and that the, uh, the public should get an opportunity to address that additional evidence in a hearing. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? All right, seeing no one, we will close the public comment section of the meeting. and. Go to the board for comment. Who wants to open it up? Go ahead, John. 
Oh, um, I understand what counsel is saying with regards to additional evidence, but I don't view it in the same matter. I think we spent a lot of time looking at this application, at the numerous uh, plans that were submitted. We did a site walk there, and um, the court actually had us look at everything again, including the minutes. And, um, and from what I remember uh, with regards to this is that uh, the back parking lot for the purposes of this summer oven restaurant wasn't going to be used uh, by the public and it was only for the landscaping business. Uh, from uh, speaking or knowing, being at that site walk um, and questions that were asked of the applicant, um, a landscape business operates from dusk till dawn and um, there was nothing in here that uh, showed that there was a necessity to, for the public with regard to this was not a public parking lot. This was a private parking lot for the landscape business. Um, as the court pointed out, uh, for the nighttime use, we didn't see any evidence and the applicant didn't give us any information with regards to the lighting in the back parking lot because the use of it wasn't for the purposes of the summer of a restaurant. It was for the landscaping business. Um, so I, I think the safety issue with regards to that has been addressed. Uh, as, part, as far as the light fixtures, uh, from what I recall also is that the light fixtures that were there um, were all pointed down, um, that there were some, um, uh, there was some discussion with regards to what types of lights they were gonna be and that there was nothing with regards to um, the light fixtures that uh, would warrant one a photometric study or another uh, that they were going to create any sort of uh, unnecessary light into the night sky. And um, with regards to that, I don't think that we need any further evidence on that issue. And I thought this issue with regards to the plantings between the sidewalk and the parking area, um, there was a lot of discussion about softening the view. I recall in the plantings that were going to be provided, we had a long discussion and looked at a lot of uh, parts of the application that addressed specifically that issue and we had a discussion on what softening meant. Um, and uh, so I don't see any necessity to reopen that issue and take further evidence on that. And in my view, we could make findings on all three of these matters based upon the substantial uh, review of all of the application materials, um, the minutes that we looked at, and the site walk uh, that we did uh, last summer. So I'd be comfortable with making findings on these. <coughs> Go ahead, Henry. Um, with reference to. Henry, microphone. Sorry. With reference to obscuring the view, I nowhere that I can determine is it required to totally obscure the view with plantings it's meant to soften the view <coughs> and I would express the fact that this is a landscape business and clearly it, they have a lot of plantings and uh, that sort of uh, material so that it blends in from my observation during the site walk that it blends in automatically because of the type of business that it is and the existing buildings which aren't being changed. So from that point of view, I think that it was quite clear that it fits in very well with the existing community around here, unlike some other uh, sites along the road which don't quite do that. Um, the other side of it was the lighting. Um, the lighting was down at pointing. We went through a sidewalk. We looked at the illumin, illumin, the illumination coming from that. They're not, and they dissipate fairly quickly. I mean, to be disruptive in the night sky, you'd have to be pointing up there and have a high intensity light. These are not a high intensity lights, whichever way you look at it. Modern lighting is not that type of focused up in the air to uh, disrupt the night sky. So anything pointing down is fairly soft and dissipates quite quickly and I think the evidence was quite clear when we looked at it um, from the site plans and from review of walking through the site. It's clearly that I don't think there's any need to revisit any of those uh, areas and take into effect other evidence which I find 
a funny word at this stage of the game, but okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Peter. <coughs> yeah, the, um, with respect to the employee parking uh, behind Building 3, uh, I really have a distinct memory of that subject being raised and discussed. I don't know if it was a workshop or uh, presentations or where it came from, but I don't believe I'm hallucinating and that they, the, uh, the fact that the back parking lot was for employees during normal business hours was uh, discussed. I, I find it a little bit bizarre that the appellant is making this great case to protect the employees of the landscaper who uh, owns the property. It makes no sense, but I think we were radically informed in that. The shielding of the lights, I think we have a technical point, and if it, you know, if it comes to it, I, I think we could simply specify that there be a shielding, you know, a type of product or equivalent to shield the upward uh, motion of the light, if that's something that Ms. McGay is still worried about. And the plantings, as I understand her point in her letter, it had to do with the plantings um, between the parking lot and the sidewalk, not the street and the parking lot, which seems like a kind of a technical uh, juxtaposition there that is, I'm frankly not terribly concerned about. Uh, it's kind of ironic. We have we have this the uh, uh, the this outfit as a professional landscaper, and the the landscaping of this whole project is is. A, a vast improvement over what's there now. I mean, it's really beautification of the entire property, taking up of uh, macadam, putting in grass areas, a lot of planting. Um, I'm not sure I agree with their technical points, nor does I'm, the substance of it really concern me, because I think there can be plantings done there galore to satisfy anybody. So I, uh, I would like to see this matter ended as quickly as possible. We're spending taxpayer money from the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, for this legal proceeding on microscopic points of n no apparent issue uh, uh, to, the, to the town or to the uh, uh, to Rudy's. I, I'm, I'm just baffled by this that it keeps coming back at us. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'll go on. Um, I agree with, I agree in substance with Peter. Uh, I think we're spending way too much time on this. I think that our sidewalks and our workshops and our meetings gave us the information. Um, we talked a lot, the sidewalk spent a lot of time talking about lighting and the fact that lighting on the existing buildings would not be changed. And, um, the fact that they were going to gate off the parking so that there was no way the public could access the back property after hours. Um, so I was very satisfied with the information that we were given. Um, I just want to proceed in a way that uh, will close this and uh, so we can move on to something else. Well, Caroline, got a question for Mr. Wall. Uh, um, just one moment, oh, Victoria. Let's give Victoria a chance to speak. Yeah, um, I, I'm just rereading what I've already read this afternoon, but um, uh, as far as when the court says, the board did not make the necessary finding that the lighting fixtures are sufficiently shielded so they don't unnecessarily light the night sky, but the board, uh, excuse me, the court did find that, um, uh, quoting, uh, let's see, that the buildings on the site along with existing proposed fencing and plantings ad adequately shield the lighting from motors, pedestrians, and adjacent buildings. And I find it, it, it just does not make sense how a motorist, a pedestrian, and adjacent buildings will not have this light on them, that there's enough shielding, but somehow it's like a spotlight going up into the night sky and yet I don't know how they can find that a judge found that this is not have adequate fixtures to keep it from going up into the night sky when I don't know how a motorist, a pedestrian, and adjacent dwellings are not going to see the light. It would have to be 
seriously, a spotlight going straight up with absolutely no, and it doesn't make sense because we all saw the information before us. We all saw that the light fixtures were going to be on buildings. They were going to be very low. Um, that's why we didn't do the photometric. Uh, they were standard light bulbs on standard fixtures. They were not adding fixtures. They was just very standard. And um, personally, I disagree with this court finding. And so in response, I would go back to the other findings that were made um, that they would not go into and flood um, other areas because it's, because in a sense, it had sufficient shielding and so that's why I disagree with the judge's fine and that's why I'm putting it into the record that we did look at this and it was fixtures on buildings, fixtures that were not even going to go more than 0.5 candle foot and that's why we didn't look into and did not hold a photometric, um, it, it's a porch lamp sort of thing in the middle of a site. It made no sense whatsoever that something that small could go into a neighbor's yard more than 0.5 and we have vast experience this board in doing site plan review we are very familiar with how much a 0.5 candle foot is and when we walked that and we saw the buildings we saw where the light fixtures are going to be we know from experience we also know um, based upon what we saw and brought to that meeting that this was not necessary, that there was no way that these lights, as small as they were and where they were located, it, it did, did not even pass the straight face test when we think about what we all saw with our own two eyes and heard on the sidewalk which was not captured because we do not have minutes taken on the sidewalk, but we all saw it, we all asked questions about it, and we all know those fixtures were too small. They were located in the center and buffered by buildings, and it just doesn't make any sense that those lights would go into the sky and cause some kind of uh, light pollution. And I just want to put that in there because it, it, it's just, it's like, I, I, I don't want to get into it, but it's just, we should put this to bed. It just doesn't, we should not go on and on with this. I know it. Off of oh. Victoria's point. Okay. Um, I completely agree with Victoria on that, and I just wanted to also add that, one, there was nobody from Rudy's with us on the sidewalk, um, even though it was open to the public. And another is this finding that the plantings between the sidewalk and the parking area will obscure the view of the parking cars and parking areas from the sidewalk. I think everybody can look at the plans and remember that there's a large area of grass between the parking area, the sidewalk, and the street. Um, and it was in that grassy area that that is where those plantings um, were going to be put that we all found were adequate to soften or obscure the view. I think we could easily add in the fact that the sidewalk, which was running parallel with the street, uh, would be incorporated in that. So I'd be completely comfortable with making that finding based upon what we've already seen. Thank you. Okay, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, my, uh, I guess my question for Mr. Wall uh, would be that is, I think you can tell the board believes that we have more than adequate information and, and indeed evidence in each of these three points. Ms. McGahey is suggesting we reopen the whole dog and pony show and have a, an amended application to have further evidence in this. Uh, personally, I don't, I don't regard it as necessary, but do you regard it as consistent with the, I mean, we, we want to satisfy the court's lingering concern in this case, no doubt about that. But do you believe that from what you've heard tonight and what you know about our involvement in this case, that we could make additional findings uh, on these three points and send it back? Uh, I just find reopening this thing to be an absurdity. Certainly, I don't think there's any requirement that you reopen the evidence if you feel that there is sufficient evidence currently in the record and based upon the submissions, the materials, and the site walk that you did to justify findings. Uh, what I would say is I think that the court, by returning this, uh, these specific issues to the board, wants some very specific findings with regard to this, with, with regard to each of the points, and 
wants the board to articulate those facts that it's relying upon to make those findings. So I think to the extent the board believes it can articulate that and articulate how and where the board was informed of this information as part of the process, that I, I think you'd be addressing the court's concerns. Do we have to have a, a recovery from a documentary or, or uh, video uh, record uh, about our being informed of this? Because we, we've, we've had workshops which aren't recorded. We've had site walks, uh, site walk which was very informative. And I think a lot of our information came from those events, which we can't actually print out in a piece of paper and say, here's what we heard. But can we, can we submit, can the board make a statement with regard to points one, two, and three that would be responsive on the facts? I, I believe as long as the information was available on a public forum such that it could be comment upon, commented upon by persons who are interested with regard to the issues being discussed, that it was, it's fair game for the purposes of deciding an issue before the board. Okay. Don't go anywhere, John. I just I want to make one comment first. Uh, Pat Carroll was on the sidewalk with us as a representative, uh, or as an interested party, he worked on uh, Rudy, so I assume he was there to represent 517 um, Ocean House Road LLC. And my second, my question has to do with our letter of July, or July 26, 2016, where at the July 19th, 2016 meeting, we made the following motions where we stated, I don't know if you have that. I, I, have I, it right I don't here. have that in front of me. I um, it was part of our packet. Um, we stated the various types of forums that, from which we gathered information in, in our motion. And I'm going, I'm re I read this earlier today and I'm reading it and I'm going, I don't know how to restate it other than the way we've already stated it in this motion that was made on July 19th. But I, I, and I, the only answer I think I can give you with respect to that is the court has identified some very, three very specific uh, issues and that uh, whether you agree or disagree with right. the court's uh, assessment of this, uh, you're bound to respond to the court's request for remand and additional findings. And in terms of dealing with it, my recommendation would be to be as specific as you can with regard to those uh, points that have been identified by the court. Okay. If, if you feel as though you need to uh, go back and say we've listed those items, but specifically this aspect of the site walk is what I'm relying upon. That type of additional information is, I think, what the court is looking for. Specificity with regard to these three points. All right, thank you. Anything else? Go ahead. Uh, for the record, I would note that the employees of the landscaping business, as somebody already mentioned, landscaping business does occur during daylight hours. And that's what we were told, that this business would be during daylight hours, and we were shown where the employees would park. And as far as the lighting goes, we were told that's why there's no lighting back there. It was because the employees are working there during business hours. They don't work in the dark. They're not, they're not planting, they're not mulching, they're not mowing in the dark. And we were told that on the sidewalk, and I guess, um, this judge is pickier than I am, so we need to put, oh, no. <laughs> we need to put things like uh, from the sidewalk. We heard yep. that the landscaping business is a di daylight only biz type of business, and that the employees will be landscaping during daylight hours. And that's why when we asked about lighting in the back, there was no lighting in the back. And now that we have all these very specific we can address them because we had these questions. I would have questioned, why is there no lighting back there? And I did. Mm -hmm. And we got the answer. And so I'm glad to know that, um, and I don't know how good Pat Carroll's memory is. Pat was not with us at all times during the site walk. We stayed together. Mm -hmm. um, but Pat was, and I will state that, Pat was not always with us while the group walked through there. 
Um, and I do remember that specifically because I was wondering what Pat was doing there. He did not volunteer that he was there as a representative of Rudy's. He did not say he was, did not say, in fact, I believe Pat said something to the effect uh, that it was just a beautiful day and he thought he'd take a drive by was his okay. comments. And I remember because, um, as everyone knows, Pat and I are neighbors. We live across from each other. Um, and yeah, I was curious what Pat was doing there. And that was his comment. So, see what kind of a memory Pat would have that from when he did not join us on all of this, if you're going to bring him into the conversation. Well, I just brought it up because yeah. uh, John, John said that no one was there, and I know that Pat worked Pat, on, the, on the project. Pat on was there. Project, so, and, I just wanted, yeah. whether he was there as, an, as a private citizen or as a representative, he, he Rudy's, sound, I don't know. He so. made it sound like, I remember, I remember what he says, because we're neighbors, and I know what he said. Well, that's fine. Yes, so. All right. um, okay. Uh, Carolyn? Go ahead. And would it be appropriate if I ask Ms. McGahee a question? Sure. Ms. McGahee, uh, what is your client trying to achieve on these three points? Does it care about the landscapers and employees? Does it believe the skies are being illuminated by this project? Uh, do you want more shrubs and plants dropped in there? And certainly his parking lot is not exactly an arboretum. Uh, you know, what do you want? Uh, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, other than prolonging this thing and reopening it and spending a lot of his money and, and ours. Thank you for the question. Uh, you know, you, you're saying that the judge is particular, but you know it's your standards that are particular. Your standards are very demanding and very particular. The only reason why the judge is looking for plantings of any kind between the sidewalk and the parking lot is because that's what your ordinance says there must be. Uh, when it says that the lights are to be shielded and they have a certain number of wattage, it's because your standards say it. Cape Elizabeth has strict and demanding standards and the judge is doing what you would expect the judge to do which is to determine, you know, is to honor your standards. And what we are saying, and you know, coming from where we were, where we were subjected to very, very demanding uh, stand their standards in all particularity, that the same thing happened with the uh, project down the road. So, um, that, and remember, you only have three standards right now, but we brought back to the court about a dozen standards, and those are still they're still a pending. So I know you're saying don't, don't spend attorney's fees, but we have no final decision from the main law court about all dozen standards. And so this, what the, there is, the judge has been very clear with you this time. It says, there, I looked at the record. He has the record. He has a transcript. And he says, I see no evidence, not no substantial evidence. I see no evidence of plantings between the sidewalk and parking lot. Uh, yes, between the street. Okay. I see no evidence. I'm almost done. I see no evidence of between. The question? No, she hasn't. And that's what. Yeah. That's you what asked me to answer the question. Yes. And what we, we, we want. We we think that this board should treat all applicants equally and apply the standards. If you don't like the picky standards, then you should amend your ordinance. But you should expect the court to honor uh, the standards that you have, and it's, the court would expect you to honor them. Uh. What I was asking is really is what does your client want? How many shrubs do you want between the sidewalk and the parking lot? Well, do you have a number in mind? Right. Well, and you know, is the, what you have said about obscure doesn't mean completely block. The court is completely on your side no. on that one. This means to soften. What, what does your client want? What does your client want? We know what the court wants. Soft. Hmm? What does that mean specifically? That would mean that um, the applicant would come back I mean, with a landscaping plan that would show Something similar, for example, to what was required of my, our client. So you want the same landscaping your client has out front? So between the sidewalk and the uh, parking lot. So you want the same. Okay. Right. And shielding, okay. actually physical shielding of the lights. So a, 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 yeah. a, a covering right. vein. Right. Okay. They call it floodlights in the application. That's why the court cannot find any evidence that it's shielded. Give me a round number. Ten is earlier plans. Will that do it? Okay. You know, All right. Uh, we'd be stop. Happy to, oh, stop. Stop. Uh, We're done. We, we would be very happy to submit a proposal. 
We're down here. Yeah. Go ahead, John. I have a suggestion for the board. Um, looking at the July 26, 2016 um, meetings, or excuse me, so the letter findings of fact. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think looking at number one, um, by simply adding at the end of that um, a sentence saying the lighting is adequate for safety in the parking area behind building number three in nighttime hours, since nighttime hour use is not contemplated, would um, satisfy the court. Uh, on number two, by um, adding in um, by adding in um, a phrase at the end of the first sentence that ends with the downward angling of fixtures closest to proper lines, um, adding in something along the lines of and do not unnecessarily illuminate the night sky along with everything else in that paragraph would um, satisfy the court with regards to findings. And then uh, for paragraph number five, at the end of the first sentence uh, that ends the, um, the plantings that sufficiently obscure the view of parked cars and parking lots from both the street and the sidewalk. Um, adding those in along with everything else in that paragraph would give the court the findings of fact that the court says that we did not establish. So that would be my proposal to the board. Uh, with regards to making those uh, findings of facts um, since they are built into everything that we've seen and I think that from how these paragraphs were uh, read and made and the findings of fact that were made by this board um, would bring in those details that the court said that we missed out on. Mm -hmm. Could just Go ahead. Go ahead. that slide that the lighting is not high intensity so it's a low intensity light that being the way it dissipates fairly quickly. And the other one was rather than obscure, but softens, or obscure then softens, rather than just obscure, if you're receptive to that. Well, I was thinking we should keep it more simple than that, but... Um, I know, I, we're, our goal is to be done with this by eight. We'll see if we can do that. Um, it's like, did anyone happen to jot down any ideas for findings while they were going through here? Say it again. Did anyone jot down any ideas for how to state findings? Well, I... I, I know was, you just reeled a couple off. Yeah, but I mean, one of the things that I think we need to be careful of, instead of just doing the part of the discussion that says we find that the lighting is adequate, that we really should point to what we looked at. And, oh, definitely. And I, that's why I said, has anyone, how we would state them? Besides what I just said. I, would, no, I think that was the right suggestion, but I always rely on Victoria when it comes to the <laughs> certain language that I find is better, but, um, which I will always deviate to I her on, but, uh, um, so that would be my suggestion on that. So, is there any necessary to add in um, about, based on sidewalk, I mean, it's, I know it's all the materials and facts submitted, but the judge is saying that they couldn't find evidence and should should our part of our evidence on these statements be once again to underline the fact that it's it's between all the meetings held and sidewalk? I mean, do we need to underscore that? I think yes. But I think we can do that with this part of the be it order in which we, um, based upon the plans and materials submitted by the applicant, advice provided by staff, including the town planner, town engineer, and code enforcement officer. And the site visit conducted on April 18, 2015, the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board makes the following findings and such and such. Are, are you suggesting that we redo this this motion with the with these findings? Or are you suggesting we do a similar motion with just those specific? I um, I would suggest uh, I would think that we could just do those three paragraphs to um, and nothing would take away from the findings of fact that we've already made. Okay. They would just add additional information to them, which I think would be adequate for um, this board and, and the court. So I'm going to ask John if your opinion um, of the approach. What I wanted to say was, I, I, obviously, I, I think that is certainly a legitimate way of going. I think in order to be responsive to what the court is asking for, just to use one example, when you talk about um, a finding that um, that the, the lighting situation around Building 3 is 
adequate for the purposes of the ordinance because nighttime use is not contemplated. I would go on to say, based upon information provided at the site walk or whether it occurred at the meeting or the site walk, I, I personally wasn't there for all of them, so I don't know, but specifying uh, information provided at this function in which it was indicated it was going to be used only during regular business hours of the landscaping business, daytime hours only. That that additional information is, I think, what the court is looking for. So I, I don't think you need to have, uh, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs. I agree with that. But I do think you need to specify exactly why, mm -hmm. based on all the information you were provided, if you believe a certain one of these specific criteria were met, why you think that, what evidence you relied upon. Just, I'm looking for a wordsmither. Cool. Where's Elaine? Well, I think what Jonathan is doing, and if Jonathan, you can add those specifics based upon, um, just as the attorney said, for sure. the uh, parking in the bed. And we will take them one at a time. Go ahead. If I could ask John Wall another question. Um, does the board need to wordsmith this tonight? Or a good point. No, not necessarily. Um, it, obviously, um, I think that the idea is to get the information out, and then it could be tasked to a um, to yourself or to me or whomever to help put this into a format where a vote can be taken. It can be reviewed. It can be amended so it appropriately reflects what the board is actually finding, and then it can be voted on. <coughs> But I'm just thinking, for the purposes of whoever's going to do that wordsmithing, having the information out will assist in that process. So, so um, it could be taken up at, at, a, at the next meeting, for example. The so actual. to table this until the next meeting. Yeah. Carolyn, do I understand correctly, this would take the form of a supplemental motion in order so the court wouldn't have to parse back through this thing. No, I, I think that's, we could make reference to that letter, but have the three items spoken to and consider it at the next uh, meeting because there will be some significant wordsmithing to yeah, completely cover the ground. Trying to do it on the fly is not, Hard, not yeah. good. Thank you, Maureen. I, I'm fine with not doing it on the fly, but it's sort of uh, So do we want to table this to our August meeting? Yeah, I'll do a motion to table. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented in the Superior Court remand, in the order dated April 27, 2017, in 571 Ocean House Road, LLC, versus Town of Cape Elizabeth, be tabled to the regular August 15, 2017 meeting of the Planning Board. Do I have a second? Jim. Seven seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, now uh, we're open for. Comment on items not on the agenda, if there's anyone who wishes to speak on something not on the agenda. If not, we're going to adjourn and go into a workshop. And make a motion to adjourn. All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. We're going to go into the Jordan Conference Room for the workshop. <laughs>